Well, hey, everybody, welcome to Our Watch. We got a lot of stuff to talk about the culture today, um, how the Bible influences the culture, how the Bible should influence the culture. Uh, we're going to talk about that and much more. And before we introduce our guest today, I want to, first of all, thank you for joining us, ask you to like this video, share this out with your friends, your family, your neighbors. Also, head on over to ourwatch.com, subscribe there, become one of our watchmen. We'd really appreciate it. That being said, we've got a, a pretty cool guest with us today. Her name is Teep, and I saw her on line social media and she's got some interesting takes on some stuff so teep welcome to our watch thanks so much for having me it's it's a great opportunity to be able to to share jesus with people um yeah that yeah what a privilege we have uh, as we we wait for his return we get to talk about him you know i i saw that there's several people that follow me that also follow you and so i saw some of your videos uh, again I, I just thought your your take on certain issues was very interesting. I thought I'd, I'd have you on and discuss what God's doing in your life and and discuss the culture and how you see things going along right now. Before we get into the culture and how you see things, uh, first of all, would you share with us just briefly your testimony? Yeah, so it, it's it's quite a long thing, so I'll kind of give you like the highlights of everything. Um, I was raised Catholic. My mom was a very um, a very avid Christian. Like she wasn't like a Christian. She had a relationship with Christ, um, and she would end up. Um, she would ultimately, long story short, end up passing away in December of 2020 due to a very rare um, genetic prion disease, um, which is it was Creutzfeldt Jakobs that she actually would end up passing away from, um, and. I, before that, started about like 2017, 2016, in that kind of a time frame, um, I got very big into like the occult, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> um, very big into like the occult. I considered myself a witch. I was doing a lot of different ritual practices and spell work and tarot and like everything that you would think a witch would do, right? Um, that was everything that I subscribed to. I was all about having like the self-proclaimed like power to change my life. Um, and then... I, st I still had like a void, you know, as, as you do, if you don't have God, there's always going to be that thing that just you can't find. Um, so I went in search of that and, um, had, you know, was dabbling in all these different religions, <clears throat> excuse me, was dabbling in all these different religions. And I found, um, I, I bought a satanic Bible. And so I started reading it and I was like, whoa, I really, I get where this is coming from. Like at the time, um, and it didn't have anything to do with like actual devil worship. And it was really just kind of like political, um, ways to stand up for yourself and, you know, ways of like self-empowerment and like the whole religion is very like about the individual. Um, so I became like a full fledged Satanist of uh, atheistic Satanist, um, and was a member of my local chapter of the satanic temple, um, from 2019 to like late 2020 early 2021 um so i'm a satanist at this point right in my life not now but at this point in my life um and my mom passed away and i i got so mad i was like mad at god you know like part of me was like she believed in you right and i'm like yelling at him like she believed in you and you took her in the most horrendous way possible that like i can think of and i remember and this is something that is not, I didn't post this on, so like, this is not something that not a lot of people actually know um, at this point, but I actually, I purchased a Bible, um, just like a little, like a cheap, like, you know, used bookstore kind of thing with the intent of reading it and like circling and highlighting like all of like the horrible stuff in it, right? Like here's all the violence to women and here's all like the, you know, the cruelty and the wickedness and the wrath of God and like all this stuff. And so as I'm reading it, I, I, that kind of backfired. And um, I had just a complete, like a complete change of heart and realized like, I, I, have, I have questions about this now. So my mom's memorial happened and I reached out to one of my friends who did her memorial. Like they knew each other from like our theater when we were in school. And um, at the end of it, I was like, Hey man, like, I'm so confused about stuff that's going on like spiritually in my life right now. And this is so weird of me to ask, but like, can you answer some questions for me? Cause like at that point, everybody knew that I was a Satanist. And like, if you're a Satanist, you're going to tell everybody. Cause that's just what, that's just what they do. So, um, he knew, you know, and he was like, yeah, like let's, let's sit down at a park. So we went out to park and he answered all these questions. And at the end of it, he was like, I have, I have a book recommendation for you. Um, that not, 
I don't normally recommend this to a lot of people because it, it's kind of bigger and it reads like kind of a textbook and not a lot of people are into that kind of thing. But the types of questions you're asking, I think you could really benefit from. So he recommended, um, I think it was like the third edition, the new evidence that demands a verdict and uh, Josh McDowell. And I'd never heard of Josh McDowell and I had never read it, obviously any of his books or whatever. So I go online and that thing is like $40 on Amazon. And I'm like, I'm a Satanist and whatever. I'm probably like, <clears throat> excuse me, never going to read it. So meh. And I took a screen cap of like the book just so that I could remember what he had recommended. And I'm glad that I took a screen cap because I looked it up later and eight days, eight, eight days after he had recommended that book to me. Um, I was, uh, on my first day as like a field agent, field installer for a, um, like a tech installation company. Um, and I go to get in the van, uh, we have a fleet of like, I don't know, like 15 ish vehicles. Right. So I go to get in this van and I go to buckle my seatbelt and right beside the center console and my seat, like in the little like cubby there is literally that book, the exact, I'm talking like the exact cover, the edition that he had recommended, like the the book that I had screen capped the picture of is literally sitting there and I froze and I like almost started crying and I was like, is this yours? Like not to be like the weird dude, do you just ride around with this like in your car? And he kind of looked at it and he laughed and he said, no, that, that was given to some other person, to another one of our like um, installers by a client and he didn't really want it. So it has just been in here ever since. Like no one really wants, like you can take it if you want. So it, it's, that book is actually on my bookshelf right now. And that was the first time that I heard God, like actually I was like, all right, like that was, that was too loud for me to, to think that that was like a coincidence. Like that was way too loud for me to keep questioning. And I did keep questioning, but that was unlike anything else in my life that I'd ever experienced with, with you know the voice of god yeah that that's incredible have you shared that with josh mcdowell um so that that is a funny that's a funny question so uh i have not i posted it out there and people kept like tagging sean in it yeah and i got a um i got a message from and it's still i have such a hard time believing that it's actually them but I, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty convinced at this point um, that they like his wife actually reached out to me and was like, hey, we saw this because people kept like sending it to us. Yeah. And um, you like we we would love to pray with you. And like if you have any questions, if you want to like um, like if you want to like uh, bounce stuff off of us, like like let yeah. us know. So well, I'm going to I'm going to call cool. Sean. I know Sean personally. Sean McDowell. So I'm going to give him a call. I know him personally. Um, I want to make that connection. It's uh, it's funny how God works and how God brings people together. And um, I'm definitely going to share this video with, with Sean and uh, love to see his reaction on this. And we'll find out for sure if it's those people or not. Um, yeah. But but you said something earlier that really struck a chord with me. And I, I want you to unpack it a little bit. I think my audience will really appreciate it. You said you were an atheistic Satanist. And yes. I, I want people to understand what that is. I think we, as we start to talk about the culture today, I think we can see, and I've talked about the difference between covert Satanism and overt Satanism. I'm going to get your take on that as well, but um, unpack that a little bit, if you would, an atheistic Satanist. So in 2024, and this is my personal knowledge, so if this is incorrect in any way, that is on. this is just what I personally know. There are two sects of Satanism. There is an atheistic sect where you actually do have people who believe in God and you believe in Satan and actually active worship Satan or actively worship Satan. And then you have the atheistic route, which is more aligned with like the satanic temple. And that is the sect that I was, um, that I was associated with, um, was the, the atheistic sect. Um, there are, I think multiple different types of atheistic Satanism, but the one that I am more familiar with, um, would be the satanic temple. Um, and I am not in any way like affiliated with them. This is just me talking about my experience with like my local chapter, um, where basically, uh, the satanic temple is 
it's difficult because they are a religious organization on paper, but they're very political in all of their viewpoints. So when I was a, uh, when I was like a member of their chapter, we did a lot of stuff um, around like social like social issues, right? Um, a lot of um, like we would go to Pride and set up at Pride and you know really advocate for that. Um, we would really advocate for religious equality. That was a huge one. So I think. Um, the, the, the biggest thing that TST, that's the acronym that the TST, um, like stood for was like religious equality. Um, and I'm sure that if you, if you know anything about Satanism, you've probably seen like the giant Baphomet statue with like the two kids at the foot of it. Right. Right. Um, that statue was actually like erected because they wanted to put it next to other religious statues on government property as their viewpoint on, you know, religious equality is, Hey, if you can have, you know, at your, you know, on, on your public ground, right. On your government ground, if you can have a 10 commandments, like, you know, statue, uh, why can't we have a giant statue of, of Baphomet with like two children. Right. And at the time I was like, Whoa, that makes a lot of sense. Right. Like religious equality and like, you know, don't force your religion upon other people if you're not going to give them, you know, like the same, the same grace or, you know, whatever. Um, but that's basically, and then they, they prescribe to be a religious organization, I believe for that fact. And a lot of it is like mind theater. And a lot of it is just big public acts to get people to think. And like, it's kind of like, like shock value. Right. Um, for me personally, the reason that I got into it and the, well, the reason that I stayed in it for, for so long, it was only like a couple of years. Um, but the reason I stayed in it so long is the, the people, uh, in our local chapter and all of the things that we actually did in our local chapter. And I'm going to say, pastor, I'm going to say some very controversial things right now. Um, but the people that were in that chapter are how I looked at, like, this is how Christians should act. This is how Christians should be. Like, they are some of the kindest, most patient, understanding, like, forgiving, warmest people that you would ever meet. But they look like they look and they subscribe to what they subscribe. Like, we we would have potlucks and we did, like, community events and we did donation drives. And we had, like, a side of the road, like, a, a stretch of, like, highway that we would clean. We did, like, road cleanups. And they were very active in the community. And I was like, this is it. Like, this is this is great, right? Outwardly, Right. Because then there would be, and I never actually went to, I never actually went to a black mass, um, but we were told all about, you know, what they did and the whole, I really don't like talking about the black masses because it's just really disturbing. Um, it's not like no one was ever like, as far as I understand, no one was actually like physically harmed in these, but the whole premise of a black mass is to pervert Christ in the most disgusting way humanly possible. Um, and when I heard about that, there was just something that didn't sit right. And like, now I know I can say like, no, like something in my soul, like in my spirit, just totally disagreed with that. And I was like repulsed, right? At the time I was like, this is not cool. And I don't know why this is not cool, you know? Um, but but now I know it's it's, that was something just a deep part of like my spirit that was like, you got it. You got to get out of here. Yeah. The Lord was protecting you in that. Yeah. Clearly. Oh Protect my gosh. My yeah. whole life in multiple ways. Yeah. Like I dodged so many bullets, honestly, he is, he has been incredible to me. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, you know, when you look at Satanism, as you, as you know, the number one rule of Satanism is do what thou wilt, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's about self yep. and when things become about self, they're not on God and they're not on people. And, mm -hmm. you know, that, that is at the core, that is what Satanism is. It's a, a religion yeah. of self. And so it's, it's, you know, a lot of people think, oh, well, it's about worshiping Satan. No, in fact, you don't even have to worship Satan as long as you're all about you and you're yeah. all that you care about, then, you know, then Satan's got you right where he wants you because exactly. God wants us focused on God. He wants us to love God and love 
people. And if we can love God and love people, you know, we'll have a right love for ourself. You know, God's word yeah. says to esteem others as better than ourselves. So mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's obviously, it's the exact opposite of what God wants. And I'm so glad that God has his hand on your life and he's pulled you from that. When you look at the culture right now, just in general, what is it that you see? The, just the, the, the culture of like the United States, the right American now? culture that we're living in. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, that is, that is such a broad, vague, oh my gosh. It, it's, I'm going to, this is also controversial, but like, it, it might as well just be unnamed Satanism. Like it, yeah. there are so many people who you're just living for yourself, right? You're, there's a lot of people out there that are living for their, there's a lot of stuff that I could get into that doesn't even probably belong in this video that if you want to change this thing about yourself, because you feel like this is your truth. I hate that your truth. There's the truth. There's not your truth. Um, but there's so many people out there that are living their truth and they're just, they're miss, they're missing it. We're missing it guys. We are missing it. Like, like, celebrities are gods now celebrity celebrities are gods phones are gods right our careers are our gods money is our you know we're serving that like you can't serve more than one master and here we are that's all we're doing right now and it's i i ugh, it's gonna get it's gonna get worse before it gets better because i think that people are so empowered right now to just live the life that you want to live because this is how you yourself want to live it. And these are the things that you feel like you need to incorporate in your life. You know, like it's a, di that's a difficult, it's, it's difficult. <laughs> you know, it, you, if you answered it exactly how I would answer it. Um, and it's the, what I call covert Satanism. It's Satanism that yeah. you don't, you don't realize it's Satanism. And yeah. Satan's so good at it because the overt Satanism, the the you know the stuff that's clearly worshiping, like the stuff like Lil Nas. You know, you see Lil Nas and and he's got videos, oh, yeah. you know, having you know sex with Satan and and yeah. see all that kind of. That's obvious. That's overt. It's in your face. It's clearly mm -hmm. that Satanism. But there's this covert Satanism that sneaks in. It sneaks into churches. It sneaks into mm -hmm. families. It sneaks into people's mindset. They don't even realize it's there. And all it is is focus on self. And mm -hmm. yeah, so I mean, I, I agree with you 100% on that. Um, and it, you know, it may be a controversial statement, but we like controversial statements on our watch. Um, you know, here's the fact. The Bible says that the truth is offensive. The, the Word of yeah. God is an offense to those who are perishing. And it hurts yeah. to hear these things sometimes, but, you know, we, we got to hear them. And um, I, I'm grateful for God having his hand on your life. I'm grateful for you reaching out and trying to share Christ with people. And uh, like I said, I just I was so intrigued by uh, the statements you were making. I wanted to have you on. And I would love to to invite you back on as things come up in the culture, things that, uh, that people have questions on, on Satanism and stuff. I'd, I'd love to have you back. Yeah, I would love to, I would love to be back. I think that it's really important right now that, you know, and I I under I will say this. This is my disclaimer. I understand that I don't look like a typical Christian. Um and I have a lot to say about that too is if you've seen any of my Instagram videos, you know that I'm very passionate about like this is how we're going to bring people back, right? By by being non-judgmental and by just looking like however you look, right? You can still walk in the spirit and wear whatever you wear to an extent. Um, but I think it's really important that that right now we're very focused on what's actually happening because we're we're letting it we're letting it go. We're we are letting it go. Yeah. Yeah, you know, um the Bible has much much to say actually about what what we wear. A man shouldn't be wearing women's clothes. That's scriptural, you know. Mm -hmm. Um and women shouldn't be dressing in a way that causes their brother to stumble. Um, mm -hmm. you know, but, but other than that, I mean, there's, there's a wide variety in our culture of how people can dress. And I think if mm -hmm. people are focused on how a Christian is dressed, um, I, I think they're focused on the wrong thing. We got way bigger fish to fry right now in yeah. the culture we're living we're, in. We're missing the point. We're, <laughs> we're definitely missing, missing the, point. the point there. Right. Um, but, but I, I, again, I appreciate you. How can people follow you? How can they get a hold of what you're putting out? 
Yeah. Um, so I, you guys can follow me if you want at, um, on Instagram at, uh, the, so T H E K M T E P E the K M T E P. Um, I post a lot about my story and a lot about things that if like, if people have questions, um, about, you know, the faith, um, a lot of my content is going, is, is geared for new believers or people that are actually coming out of Satanism and the occult, uh, people that would, you know, look at normal, normally dressed, I will say church going people and feel uncomfortable if that's you, we're here for you. We love black lipstick and, you know, spikes as well as the next person. So uh, I really feel like it, it really doesn't matter, like I said, to an extent, what you wear, what you look like. God is for everybody. Jesus is for everybody. Jesus died for you individually as a person. And it doesn't matter if you like heavy metal music, you still belong here. Amen. Amen to that. Well, Teep, thank you so much for joining us, and I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. Go over, subscribe to her channel. She's got a lot of great stuff. Um, again, share this video out with your friends, your family, your neighbors. Get over to rwatch.com. Subscribe. Become one of our watchmen. We'd really appreciate that. Until next time, we'll see you right here on Our Watch with Tim Thompson.